Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Football Baron Podcast. We talk about Liverpool being shocked with an Arsenal win against Liverpool, as well as a Tottenham potential signing coming from the Chinese Super League, alongside another wonder kid to watch in this episode of the Football Baron Podcast. Let's start with some of the match day recaps. Newcastle versus Tottenham. Harry Kane with a brace. Tottenham winning against Newcastle 3-1. A performance that you should expect from uh, Tottenham, looking at their squad and the quality that they have, as well as just the overall play that they have against a team like Newcastle, who have been struggling as of late. Another two important set of matches was Man City versus Burnmouth and of course Everton versus Aston Villa. Both games were crucial for Burnmouth and Aston Villa. Aston Villa and Burnmouth trying to get out of that relegation zone and stay in the Premier League. And of course uh, Aston Villa was ahead 1-0 and unfortunately didn't for them get 3 points which could have helped them in that relegation battle, but still did get a point. Burnmouth, however, did not even get a point with Man City winning in a 2-1 scoreline. Overall, I think both teams looking very strong and uh, looking very strong in the relegation battle ahead, even though there's only two games. I think, I if, if I'm to be honest, I don't see, uh, I see very hard, I see it very hard for Watford. Uh, looking at what Watford has ahead of them, while Aston Villa, it doesn't seem as difficult. And uh, just overall, I I don't know. I think it's just going to be down to three teams, really. It's going to be down to Burnmouth, Aston Villa, and Watford. One of those teams will be staying in the Premier League. West Ham is secure. Now, speaking of West Ham, West Ham versus Watford. Crucial game for both teams, in with the both of them being relegation battle strugglies. They uh, were trying to get those three points, or even a point potentially, but most importantly, those three points to really further the gap. And West Ham won 3-0 scoreline before the, uh, at the end of the first half. And uh, my goodness, was it deserved. Just looking at what the play was, and specifically, like, players such as Declan Rice, just absolutely incredible. If you did not see the highlights, I would recommend looking at it because if you just looking at Declan Rice's wonder shot, absolutely incredible. Just burned it down just from, like, so many yards outside of the box, and he just hits it into the net. Really incredible, amazingly talented player, and just uh, some a player to really keep an eye out for. Now, speaking about Declan Rice as a player, I think if you there was a post match interview, and you can really see some captain material surrounding him and his personality. The way he recognized that they got crucial three points, but he also recognized that in the second half of the game, they did concede a goal, and really, they weren't the same team as they were in the first half. And you see that, I think that's important, specifically in a captain, to recognize and make sure his fellow teammates and his team overall understand that they can't be doing uh, things like that, where in the second half, they just give up or aren't in the exact uh, same mentality in winning the game. And that will ultimately get them into continued relegation battles. And he even said that, how the reason why they're in a relegation battle is because they aren't fully there in the second half. And I think that's I think that's really interesting for how young he is. I, think, I believe he's 20 or 21. And that's still incredible for being that young and recognizing that influence on the pitch for his team and his play as well. And understanding what his team needs to do is important, as well as addressing it with his teammates and uh, recognizing it and being honest about it. I think that really does show a lot of uh, captaincy material or just overall leadership uh, attributes that's that's really in, that's really key for this player. Not only is he a talented young player with a lot of, uh, of course, talent <laughs> being a only 20, 21 and still has a lot to improve, as alongside he has some of that leadership, uh, leadership potential that we could see later in the Premier League in the future. Another interesting match was Arsenal versus Liverpool. Liverpool were looking to break the record for most points earned in a season. And with Arsenal shocking them in a 2-1 victory, with Liverpool just stumbling. After they scored the first goal with uh, Sadio Mane, I believe, just tapping it in from across from Andrew Robertson, 
you could see that momentum coming from Arsenal. <laughs> and then what you see later is that Arsenal is slowly coming back, and then a mistake from Virgil van Dijk and uh, uh, from, uh, from a goal from uh, Alexander Lacazette just really firing the team forward. And then Arsenal just defended, defended quite well against Liverpool. And Liverpool just looking frustrated, Jurgen Klopp looking frustrated. And Arsenal really did just shock the champions and uh, was really a solid performance from them. But Arsenal, of course, they also had a bit of luck because, let's be honest, the looking at the game, even later in the half, Liverpool should have scored a goal. But were just held out, not only by Arsenal defense, but just that luck that Arsenal had on that game. And I'm not trying to undermine exactly what Arsenal did, but still, the luck was a factor. Even Mikel Arteta has stated that, that it was a mixture of grit and, of course, luck. But looking at Arsenal's situation at the moment, you can see Mikel Arteta has definitely improved the team, really gave that a little bit of a consistency. If you look at the past couple of games they've had, they've just been overall pretty pretty strong team, winning and uh, just very few defeats, such as Tottenham was one defeat. But other than that, a solid performance from Arsenal under Arteta. But looking at future of Arsenal, I think that or, uh, Mikel Arteta has even talked about how he needs transfer backing, he needs money and funding to really make Arsenal a top four team. And in order for for them to do that, they will need backing from, uh, I believe the owner is Kroink, Kronk? I don't know his exact name, but they're looking to get funding from him. And uh, you never know, because sometimes owners of these clubs will will say they might, but they won't give as much, or they may not give any at all. And if Arsenal are looking to be a future uh, a dominant club once again, as they were in the past, or a strong, solid club in the past, then they need that funding. Because what we're seeing from Arsenal is a sort of revival under Arteta with them climbing up the ladder but overall they still need that funding if they're going to be looking to even go higher up that ladder because the quality of the squads Arteta again was talking about this in the post-match interview is that there's a huge difference in the quality of the squads and it's clear to see the players on Arsenal is there's still there's quality in that team we got players such as Aubameyang and Lacazette and uh, uh, other players such as them. And what we're seeing is, like, not enough quality. And in order to get that quality, you need to invest in the transfer market. Leicester City against Sheffield United. Leicester City was slipping up with a defeat at Burnmouth. And uh, overall, they were just in decline just recently for with a dominant start to the season. And overall, just looking very strong in the midseason as well. And then they just slowly declined from there. That fire that we saw wasn't really there anymore, and uh, but slowly we're trying to we're trying to see what Leicester can do at the end of the season. I think that Leicester City were expected to hold on to top four, and now they're looking like they could potentially lose it to the likes of Manchester United or Chelsea. And uh, what it's looking like is that Leicester City is the the dominant fire that we saw in the beginning of the season or mid-season isn't fully there anymore. I think that it's just just a pure luck, or not pure luck, but just a strong string of form from some of their key players, such as Jamie Vardy, who was just absolutely on fire, and he's the leading uh, nominee or leading player for the Golden Boot. And uh, I think the reason why is that early in mid-season, where he just absolutely dominated the league in terms of his goal scoring output. And what I think Chelsea, uh, excuse me, not Chelsea, but Leicester overall, I think it's a team of the future. Looking at some of the players on their team, I think that it's more of a project, I'd say. I think that Leicester City are, of course, just looking to get Champions League or Europa League football as they grow as a club. I think that just looking at the players, let's say, look at Soyuncu. Soyuncu was looking strong in the season, and he's slowly getting back. Of course, he had that poor performance at Burnmouth. And we're seeing other players, such as Harvey Barnes. We're seeing uh, Iosi Perez. We're seeing players, players, just these young players that Leicester City's recruitment has been doing 
quite a solid job in bringing into the club. And I think that although there's a potential for Leicester not to get top four, I think that in the future, in next season, or maybe two seasons, three seasons, whatever, we could see a Leicester City showing that dominant side again. But I don't I don't think we're, we're going to see some of the pieces that we see uh, in this season, such as Casper Schmeichel or Jamie Vardy, because they're, they're pretty old now, 33 years old, I believe, both of them. And I think that we only got a year or two left on them before they will retire or move on because the playing time is reduced. But overall, again, definitely a club of the future. And uh, I think they're a club of the present and the future, but what they're building is something quite remarkable and a future dominant side in the Premier League. Time to move on to some transfer stories. Now, Tottenham have had some problems when it comes to center back with players uh, in the beginning of the season, such as Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld, potentially leaving. Although they signed uh, Toby Alderweireld a new contract, uh, which will have him stay for some more years at Tottenham. Jan Vertonghen looking like he will leave at the end of the season. Now, that, of course, will be a problem. I mean, Tottenham really just has had some defensive issues, and they really need to strengthen that area of their game as well as other parts of the squad. But they're looking to do that with a potential signing of Kim Min Jae to Tottenham, if I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's a Korean international defender, and he's quite a physically dominant player. Six foot three, very, very strong. Overall, a lot of strength in that defensive back line that he could provide. And he's not that bad uh, when it comes to passing and overall just uh, getting stuck in and tackling. Uh, just. Just overall looking to be a solid defensive player that could uh, really strengthen the Tottenham back line. Now, of course, Kim Min Jae, he's in the Chinese Super League currently and is a looking like he's going to potentially move to Tottenham. And of course, I think there's of course going to be a major influence with his Korean international captain, uh, Hyun Min Son, out on that team and potentially influencing him or uh, giving him a reason to come there because, of course, Hyun Min Son can help him adapt. And I think that it will be a bit of a tough transition if he does sign to Tottenham as a defender. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a tough transition because the Chinese Super League to the Premier League will be a different environment, different uh, pace of the game, different overall just what's going on uh, when it comes to how they play football. Just The Premier League will take some time to get used to, and I think that uh, Kim Min Jae will, will most likely have a tough time. If he doesn't have a tough time in the beginning, then that's impressive and incredible. If he signs, again, I just want to say the key word, if... But it's looking like it with some sources stating that he's uh, that Tottenham are looking to fly him over, uh, fly him over to uh, potentially sign him. But if he does get signed, of course, I think that it will take potentially a season before we see fully what he's capable of. And of course, he's only 23 years old, and I think that's still fairly young for a central defender. I think a central defender it takes a pretty good amount of time before they can become world-class or elite elite level and I think what we're seeing is a potential uh, future of solving Tottenham's defense I mean uh, human son can really help him transition uh, learn English uh, as a, he can translate for Kim and Jay and just really overall help him transition and we could see a strong player for the Tottenham back line all right, now we're going to be going into our Wonder Kid to Watch segment of the podcast. Now, this episode, we're going to be going, of course, the Wonder Kid from Scotland playing for Chelsea Football Club, Billy Gilmore. Now, Billy Gilmore, prior to the lockdown, was looking absolutely stellar. And I think we saw even key pundits such as Roy Keane, who, uh, to be honest, doesn't really praise that often. But he said that, oh, he looks like a world-class player on the pitch. And I think we have a bright future star uh, in the Chelsea lineup, specifically in that central midfield. Just what he's doing, how he's able to get the better of some absolutely world-class players, such as Fabinho in the 
Liverpool versus Chelsea game for the FA Cup. And what we're seeing is a strong central midfielder, not physically, let's be clear, because Billy Gilmore is not that tall and he doesn't have a lot of strong physical attributes. But overall, as a player, uh, what it, his technique and what he, his passing ability and overall vision, what we're seeing is he can really dominate that central midfield and really keep possession of the ball and maintain that authority for Chelsea in that midfield. Now, Billy Gilmore, uh, he, he was a, prior to his overall just strong performance prior to the lockdown, he was a Scottish uh, under-21 international, and he was w- widely viewed as a future potential star. And what we're seeing from Billy Gilmore, I think, unfortunately, in recent games, such as the Chelsea versus Crystal Palace game, we saw him not really playing that well, despite him getting a start for that game. But what we saw prior to that was a strong future young prospect. And we're looking at a solid player. I I can't stress this enough because I really do think that Scotland has a strong future player for them. And I think if if Scotland could do potentially great things with players such as Kieran Tierney and Billy Gilmore coming in to the team and just overall raising prospects for whatever international success... Uh, or whatever international future that they have. As well as on the club level, Chelsea, they could look to strengthen that midfield. And there's already reports of players such as Jorginho, excuse me, leaving for the leaving the club to find more playing time or just for other uh, potential uh, prospects, futures. And with that, with a potential hole left with potentially uh, Jorginho leaving, you could see Billy Gilmore taking that spot. And that's what he did in that Crystal Palace game. Unfortunately, he did get an injury as well and will be going through uh, surgery. Hopefully that doesn't affect him and his future career. But overall, what we're seeing from Billy Gilmore is hopefully a continuous development that we've been seeing throughout the season. Just overall getting better because the players that he's... Uh, surrounded with in the Chelsea or uh, in, in the Chelsea team is top qu- quality players who can hopefully teach him and really uh, help him develop as well as well as he's under a top class midfielder of a manager uh, during his playing days Frank Lampard who can really also help him just develop further and we could see a future Chelsea star as well as a Scottish uh star as well just really helping the both teams on the international and the club level really just spur his teams to success and hopefully with that injury that he's facing he can get through it and uh, move on and put that injury behind him and hopefully that doesn't mess with his career far too much with that wonder kid to watch segment that will be of course our last segment and will this will be the conclusion of the podcast uh, if you are listening on apple podcast spotify or any other podcast platforms such as stitcher google podcast any of those please subscribe to us or follow the our podcast on that specific platform like us or rate us to really help us uh, get higher and uh, reach more people with this podcast also you may check out our youtube channel or those for who are watching this on youtube our channel is football baron and is on the youtube top page for football baron that is our youtube channel name and if you would like to subscribe and hit the like button for all our videos of course on the youtube channel we have videos in smaller format from the podcast that you can watch in a shorter period of time again thank you all for listening to this episode of the football baron podcast hope you all have a great day and thank you again for watching